Anyway, good evening, everyone. Uh, and thank you, Madam Ambassador, for this wonderful invitation to speak on behalf of American growers, American investors in, in Ecuador. My name is Ramiro Peñarrera, but actually it's Robin. And my family calls me Robin. My father's Ramiro. Not a lot of uh, imagination in the family. Uh, I'm a United States citizen. I'm born and bred here in Washington, D.C. I went to Horace Mann Elementary, then Murray, then Landon. I know that Master Sally's kids go to, um, to St. Albans. I didn't get accepted. Um, I now grow flowers in a farm just north of Quito. First, um, this presentation is divided actually into two parts. The first, a little bit about Ecuadorian floriculture and about our investment in uh, the U.S. investment in Ecuador. And the second part is called Flowers for Kids. And Flowers for Kids is a hand-on approach. We go around the country giving classes to, uh, to children or to florists how to teach kids about and parents about how to take care of flowers. And we'll be doing a, a short class here, so I'm going to need a volunteer. I actually, um, if you don't volunteer, I will choose someone. Uh, National Zoo comes to mind. Um, <laughs> Um, now, this room actually holds a certain significance for me on a personal level. Uh, in August of 1953, my parents were married right here in this ballroom. At the time, my father's father was, um, had just left his post as ambassador uh, from Ecuador to the United States to become uh, the Ecuadorian foreign minister. My, um, his name was Luis Peña Herrera. My mother's father, Robert Elliott Freer, uh, had left his post as head of the Federal Trade Commission, as chairman of the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, I only mention this uh, not to boast or anything. The fact is I was brought up to believe in trade mixed with diplomacy at an early age. I firmly believe in it, and I know that Ambassador Silly believes in the same thing as a great proponent of it. That's why I'm here. Um, so in my 24, actually 25 years in May of growing flowers, I've seen profound social and economic impact in the areas where there are flower farms. Uh, one example is the county of Pedro Moncayo, which is about an hour, hour and 15 minutes north of Quito, straddles the equator. Um, I, a quick story about here, I didn't, I just thought, I thought about it 10 minutes ago. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, you're thinking, where's the reference? Abraham Lincoln had an ambassador. They didn't call him ambassador in those days. And uh, he wrote a book called Four Years Amongst the Ecuadorians. And he describes Pedro Moncayo County as being just dirt poor and horrible. And when I arrived in Ecuador in 1982, it was the same way as the, that ambassador um, described. It's a great book, Four Years Amongst the Ecuadorians. Uh, but Pedro Moncayo has now tra drastically changed. Um, it used to have you know, a few stores. There were no banks, uh, mud hut poverty, massive migration from Pedro Moncayo to the cities, the major cities, and also, obviously also to, to Spain and the United States. Uh, then came the flower farm, basically back in 1985. Uh, the typical rose farm in Pedro Moncayo, because it's known for roses, provides transportation in the morning and the afternoon, breakfast, lunch, sports teams, credit union, daycare, lots of other benefits. Farms with more than 60 workers have on-site doctors. Additionally, all workers are covered under a national health care system. Most farms take all their workers for an annual trip to the beach. Slightly problematic. Ecuador, you know, keep where the growers, that's the highlands, no water, uh, or no, you know, no, no beaches, no ocean, there's always a problem of drowning. Uh, it's the first time, the, the, the Ecuadorian workers on the farms, they don't know how to swim, um, but they manage. 60% of the farm workers in, in the flower farms are women, and that's empowerment. Now, Pedro Moncayo, the county, has the highest per capita income in the Ecuadorian highlands. It's the same as Chile's per capita income. Uh, there are profusion of banks, some better than others, some at high, really high interest rates, unfortunately. Most workers have a cell phone. Actually, all workers have cell phones uh, and DVD players. And most importantly, they have their own home. And there's lots of little stories I can tell, but I'm not going to bore you with everything. Uh, and at the end, I've seen two things that parents do when they have a little bit of discretionary income. Uh, the first thing they do is they send their kids to a good school, a parochial school. That's becoming less and less necessary as the school system in Ecuador is vastly improving, so that doesn't happen. The second thing, uh, which I always thought was more of a waspy English thing, was they put braces on their children's teeth. And it's amazing. You'll be in this middle of nowhere and you see these kids, you know, I was embarrassed when I was at Landon with braces. But these kids are proud to have braces on their teeth. It's just very, very different. Um, uh, anyway, so at the entrance of Pedro Moncayo, there's a large sign that says Canton Pedro Moncayo, you know, Capital Mundial de la Rosa. Uh, the, obviously the capital of the world's capital of roses. They even have a, a, a every year they have the Reina de la Rosa, the Queen of the Roses, and they, and they, they do it, I think, every September, I believe. Uh, I, my farm's, by the way, not in Pedro Moncayo, but we'll be talking about that later. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. 
The areas with flower farms, it's, as I said, have little migration. People get to live with their families in their own culture. Children have both, both parents at home, and I think we can all agree that's a positive step. Floriculture is the agricultural star of the Ecuadorian Andean highlands. And here's a little more about Ecuadorian floral trivia. More than 25% of the total acreage, we call it hectares, uh, is owned by US citizens, like me. I wish I had 25%, but no. We measure, we measure in hectares, by the way. One, one of the nice things the French gave us, one of the few things the French gave us was a metric system. A hectare is two and a half acres, 100 meters by 100 meters, football field by, by football field. There's about 4,000 hectares in Ecuador, 10,000 acres, and so one quarter is owned by American citizens. Th that makes an approximate American investment in Ecuador in flowers, just in flowers, $150 million. Now, if you add on other ATPDA-affected products like broccoli, tuna, and everything else, we're well over $200 million, which is far higher than any U.S. investment in petroleum. Uh, and it's not just about the investment. Many of us work with the RUS and the embassy in Quito to actively build bridges of understanding between the two countries. And obviously, that's why I'm, I'm here. Uh, we Americans are on the field ambassadors for our country. Obviously, our ambassador Nam, every time he needs to go to a restaurant, he has to get security clearance. We don't. We are diplomatic boots on the ground. Here's an example, Memorial Day flowers. Some of you have heard of it before. Uh, in 2011, three of us got together and we called up Arlington National Cemetery and we handed out 10,000 roses uh, to, to visitors on Memorial Day. It's grown. Uh, last Memorial Day, we handed out 250,000 roses at 200 cemeteries across the United States. At Arlington, it was 140,000 roses were given to visitors to place on headstones. Uh, Section 60, the President and Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, Hegel, and uh, uh, First Lady Michelle received roses from some of our volunteers. Uh, the two major sponsors of this program are New Jersey-based wholesale florist Delaware Valley and also the Ecuadorian government, and that's completely thanks to Ambassador Selly. So thank you very much for supporting. It's now Memorial Day Flowers is now a foundation, Memorial Day Flowers Foundation here in Washington, D.C. Uh, as I said before, floriculture is the agricultural star of the Ecuadorian highlands. It unites the two cultures, it unites the two countries. You buy our roses, we buy your John Deere tractors from Illinois, your plastic sleeves from Colorado, your fertilizer from Texas, the little flower, flower food um, envelope sachets from, um, from Florida. Uh, Ecuadorian roses are known as the best roses in the world, and we, we'll talk about that a little bit later too. But they, believe it or not, they help small florists stay in business. They differentiate themselves from mass market and other gift-giving ideas. And again, we'll talk about that. Uh, trade, and this is what flower business is all about. Trade opens doors and it opens minds. Uh, so thank you very much. That concludes the first part. And the second part will make fun of someone, National Zoo. Um, anyway, but thank you very much. And I, um, well, you can clap, that's all right. Now, and by the way, Natalie Sell, Ambassador Sell is completely right about Ecuadorian women. They are very, very smart. Maybe not so smart because one married me, but nonetheless. Um, so what we do is, I have a company, we have something called Flowers for Kids. Flowers for Kids is a voluntary group of 60 growers in Ecuador, and with the support of the Ecuadorian uh, embassy and the Ecuadorian government, and we realize that the backbone of American business is a small business. And so we've seen, in my 25 years of growing flowers, we've seen, tw well, 25 years ago there were 50,000 small floors in the United States. Now they're about, according to the Society of American Florists, there's 14,000, 14, really about 10 or 12. Thousand floors. They're going away. And they're really the backbone of the community. And so we came up with a program called Flowers for Kids. And what Flowers for Kids does, it trains florists how to give classes to children. The problem with America, and I'm going to say it a little bit like a Euro trash way, Americans don't buy flowers because flowers don't last long. They don't last long because they don't know how to take care of them. So if we teach Americans how to take care of flowers, they will last longer and they will buy flowers. This is something to preserve flowers, and we're not going to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's room for all of us. Uh, <laughs> As Rodney King said, we can all get along. Um, so what we do, we train florists around the country how to give a class. It's a 24-minute call and response class. I'm not going to do the 24 minutes with you. I'm just going to do a short one about how to take care of flowers. At the end of the class, the kids know a little bit about flower trivia, how to take care of flowers, and how to make an arrangement with the fillers, lines, focals, and greens. And they go home, and they, and they, they make their bouquet, and they get how to take care of flowers, they get a sachet of flowers, and they get an invitation that says, come by Jane's Flower Shop and take the Flower for Kid quiz to get your, uh, get your d diploma and two more roses. And you must be accompanied by a parent. Uh, right, with? 
<laughs> it doesn't say that on the invitation, but you get the general gist. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to give a quick presentation here. Uh, and so, so I, went, I need you to act a little like, like eight-year-olds. Just for, just, for, just, for, just for a minute, and work with me on this. Okay, so we have beautiful flowers here, obviously. And what is the, what is the most famous flower? What's the most widely sold flower in the world? Roses. roses. And we have gorgeous roses. Roses are grown everywhere, but the best roses are grown in Ecuador. Long stems and big heads, because we're right on the equator. The higher up you go, by the way, the longer the stem becomes and the bigger the head. Less production, but longer stem, bigger heads. Uh, but what do all roses have? Little boy. Thorns. thorns. And why do you think roses have thorns? Protect them from what? Nice well, uh, millions of years, and we, we, have, we have secretaries, we have flower cutters, we don't you know, so they didn't evolve like that, but nice try. And you always have an adult saying that. The eight-year-olds would never say like that. They, well, they, from, not from us picking it, from, from animals that would eat it, right? What would you call an animal that's a vegetarian that would eat a rose? All eight-year-olds know this. Work with me. Carnivore, omnivore. There you go, herbivore. Good, good. Regress, regress, okay? <sighs> I'm really working here. Okay, so roses have thorns to protect themselves from herbivores. They also have thorns for another reason as well, because all plants need sunlight and what else to grow? Water. Water. So what do you think is in each one of these roses? Is thorns, thorns. Water is like a mini reservoir, French word, or hump on the camel's back. Okay, now when you get older boys and girls, you'll realize the real reason why their roses have thorns, because there's a special symbiotic relationship between beauty and pain. <laughs> Obviously, you've been in love. <laughs> okay, when the florist does this, this is, a, this is, by the way, this is the Disney script. I'm gonna skip a lot of things here. When the florist does this, always there's a, the teacher in the back like, like, wakes up and says, ah, and you know, she laughs when the symbiotic relationship between beauty and pain. So that's what we talk, we talk about, okay? And but we, Ecuador just doesn't grow roses, by the way. Okay, 87% of what it grows is roses. They also have other flowers as well. Delphinium is, they grow delphinium. Does anyone know why it's called delphinium? Hmm? <laughs> is it pretty? Delphinium means pretty in, in Greek, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, delphinium is, in Greek is dolphin's, dolphin's snout. Yeah. Okay. There you go. That's for you. First time a guy's giving you flowers. Um, Ecuador grows some fantastic delphinium. Benito Jaramillo, who has supplied all the flowers here today for the uh, flowers beside the roses, um, almost all the flowers, uh, he is a president of Expo Flores and he grows delphinium and he's known for delphinium. It's a flower that we actually compete with California. <coughs> Cal Ecuador, by the way, has about 7,000 acres of roses. Uh, a small farm in Ecuador, for a rose farm in Ecuador, would be 12 hectares, about 30 acres. That is the total acreage of roses in California. That's what you know. So the 30, 30 acres in California, 7,000 in Ecuador. Uh, so those, those are some of the things. Another flower that's very important is this flower. Matter of fact, this is the most important flower. Can anyone guess why? No, again, why is it the most important flower? It's the flower that I grow. Okay. <laughs> And just so you know, Ecuador, okay, 95% 95, 95 of all baby's breath in the United States sold is from Ecuador. 5,000 people get their, their living from growing baby's breath. And it's infinitely more difficult than growing roses. Any, any, I'm oh, sorry, cut that please. Anyone can grow roses. No, that's not true at all. Uh, anyway, so this is what we do. So uh, now I need a volunteer to come up here, please. Uh, Ambassador Walt. Are you here anywhere? Okay, well, guess what? You're up. <laughs> and what is your name? Saeed. Saeed. Okay. Well, Saeed, well, come on up here. Okay, so generally we get, we get the most egregious child to come up here to, to help, but we're going to have to work with this. So once you, you know, once you get your roses at Jane's Flower Shop, what do the roses need? You got a rose. What do the roses need? They need what? Water, so get your water, so you get the water and you should, you should cut them. And by the way, when you cut flowers, everyone says about diagonal and things like that, you really should try to cut the flowers underwater. Because when you cut a flower underwater, the first thing it soaks up is what? It sucks up is water, the breath of water. And if you, if you cut it in the air, what happens, it squeezes like that and causes a little air bubble. And it won't suck, up the, uh, suck it up. If you can't do that, you have to remember the five second rule. Now, what's the five-second rule for all eight-year-old kids? Right. Well, there's a five-second rule in flowers, too. Okay, the five-second rule in flower. 
flat flowers that you cut in the air and you have, you have five seconds to get in the, in the flower. Now, I have a small story to tell about that, and I, you know, it's, someone did laugh at it earlier today. I've been giving this presentation all over the world. I went to Japan a couple of years ago, and you know, well, there's no five-second rule, by the way, in England or in Europe or in, or in Ecuador like that. I thought, pretty much, it's only, only in the United States. So I was in Japan giving this presentation, in Japanese, by the way, you know, I had to learn how to do it. And, but I said, you know, I was doing the translation, I said, well, you probably, you don't have the five-second rule here. He said, no, we have three-second rule. And I said, you're shorter. And I said, oh, God, I really said that. And <laughs> again, unsuccessful comedy. Um, anyway, so that's what you know. But all flower, all people, we need, we need sustenance. And so flowers need it as well. What gives us energy? Sugar, sugar. So to make flower food, you need two tablespoons and a liter of water or a quarter of water. You need two tablespoons of sugar, right? Well, uh, obviously, Sahih does not help much in the kitchen. <laughs> That's true? No, he's not that. I'm not that well. Okay, okay. Okay, but it needs some, the sugar opens up the flour and needs something to drop the pH a little bit, just like we like Coca-Cola or Sprite or whatever. What, what, would, what would make it acidic? Lemon. Lemon, okay. So we got, ah, just so happen to have a little bit of lemon. Okay, I like lemon. So what do you call water, sugar, and lemon? Lemonade. So flat, we like lemonade, so flowers like lemon. Right. So basically, this class is all about when, the kid when a kid sees a word like carnivore or omnivore, he's going to think about flowers, right? Because herbivore, right? And he's going to think, when he thinks drink lemonade, he's going to think about flowers and Jane's flower shop. This is purely commercial like that. This is why the Ecuadorian government's jumped on this thing. They said, okay, how do we help the small floors? Okay, so that's how you take care of flowers. If you don't have lemon, what else can you use with acidic? Funny you should ask, I would say, okay, or you can use vinegar like that, okay? We don't tell, you, know, you don't tell kids to use bleach. Bleach is a, is a biocide, you don't want to tell that. Eight-year-olds and bleach don't go together. But that's how you take care of flowers. However, don't go anywhere, saying. Okay. Maybe you can stay right there. Okay, but the best flower food is what comes in these little packages. They're called sachets, sachets, sachets. Everyone eight-year-old sachets, sachets. Sachets, just not a French way of walking backwards. Kids don't get that joke. <laughs> Are we supposed to be nice to the French? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> and so you have like that. By the way, these are five gram packages. So you, 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 that's good for a pint. So this is beside a quart. So what's that? What's in the sachet? A carbohydrate, um, like basically sugar, citric acid, and a biocide. And that's it. What's that? Pretty much, except the biocide is basically like adding bleach, OK? Uh, in a perfect world, uh, every other day, change the water, change the water. You should really cut the stems every other day um, a little bit and then and then change the water. I mean, and when you buy flour, just say, look, I want the flour food. I mean, we've given this presentation to, to a supermarket and said, look, you should have two things. One, you should have cutters, secondary flour cutters, selling them and also sell, sell packages of flour food. But now you guys know how to make flour food. Okay, so that's how you take care of flowers. You know the five second rule, cutting underwater, you got all that. So now we make a bouquet. You want to face everyone instead of facing me, okay? All right. <laughs> but, but, by the way, this is a cultural thing too. When we give, the, we give this presentation in, um, at all the farms in Ecuador, we get all the workers to do this. It's called Flores para Floricultores. It's very cool. And we have someone with the American embassy who comes with us and we, who tells them, look, migration's good, but not illegally. So that's how we work with the American embassy on that. Um, and the program was actually, um, the Flowers for Kid program was actually um, Nominated as a Ben Franklin with Ben Franklin Public Service Award. I lost to, to Brubeck, Dave Brubeck. What has he done since the 60s? I don't know. You know just take five. Uh, anyway, so we do this, <coughs> and now we, we, make, we make the bouquet. And so to make a bouquet, you need the three flowers. Okay, so we, the first are, are fillers. What does a filler do, boys and girls? It fills, fills baby breath to get the most, <laughs> most, most important flower. Okay, I'll take like this. That's so a filler like that. And the next flowers are lines. And lines, we use a little bit of delphinium here. And oh, just one little filler here and one there. Like that. And what do line flowers do, do you think? It, it, makes a, it makes the arrangement taller. It, it frames the arrangement, so to speak. 
Okay? Natalie Selly has been very nice in saying, actually, can I can arrange flowers? Not really. I'm not, I'm not good as Maggie is who was doing this. But, okay, but the kids say, this is fantastic. Now they get the flowers. The next flowers are focals. And focals could be carnations, sunflowers. By the way, Ecuador invented the small sunflowers. Remember when we were kids, sunflowers that big? And now they're this small? Why? Because we can't compete with the big sunflowers because of freight. So we came up with a way of making small sunflowers. That means you plant more per square meter density and you put a cage over so the birds don't eat the seeds. And then when they get about this big, you take off all the leaves so you don't have the, have the fungus. And so it's very, very labor intensive. And it was a great business for about five years. Uh, and then everyone else copies. So the, the only focals we have, the only, are the wonderful Ecuadorian roses. So we'll take a couple of roses here, one here. I'm gonna grab a couple over there, these red roses here. Okay. You did a great job, Sahid. <laughs> By the way, you should. You should. <laughs> well, it depends. It depends on how. It depends how interactive this becomes, Natalie. Okay, take off all the sleeves, all the sleeves, all, all the leaves here, because that that brings that brings you know makes the water dirtier. So like that, and the next flower we only have one green here, and the green is, the focal like is the focal point. It's like it's like. The main, the main attraction, the feature, the feature presentation is what it is. So obviously when the kids go to the movies and say, now the feature presentation, they think of flowers, they think of Jane's Flower Shop. Mm -hmm. So that is your first arrangement. What do you think, boys and girls? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you get it. So you have kids, you got 50 kids on the floor looking at the floor as like a goddess. And now they finally understand flowers. They'll never look at a painting, a picture, or a flower arrangement without thinking, I know what the focal is, the feature presentation, the filler, the line, and the green. So it's education. I mean, remember when we we had to learn how to be taught, how to drink wine in the you know, in the '70s, drink micro beer in the '80s, drink coffee in the '90s, dark chocolate and all that thing. An educated American, and that's not an oxymoron as much as those Europeans like to think it is. An educated American is a great consumer, but we have but we as producers have to educate our, our people, our, our natural market, and that's why. The Ecuadorian government has been behind this program. So that is the bouquet. That's your first arrangement. So real men make arrangements. <laughs> okay? Now, what I, what I do tell them is very, you know, the flowers, flowers live and then they, they die. So the first flower that will die will be the delphinium. And so you take the delphinium out. And then the, the rose will eventually die. The baby's breath will eventually die too. So you, so you, do, you, do, some, you do some cutting here. And you get, rid, you, know, you get rid of the roses. And all you're really left with at the end of the day is, <laughs> is that, and, no, and, okay, and boys and girls, that doesn't look particularly good, right? Okay, however, because you guys, because you are eight-year-old smart little smarty pants, little kids, and you really know, all you got to do is cut it like this, kind of like that, and put it in a little bottle like this, yeah. right? Wow. Okay, by the way, what is this bottle? Anyone know? Starbucks, right? <laughs> okay, very good. Right? So basically, we came up with this. This bottle is perfect for small arrangements. Why? Wide, wide mouth, and it opens up here. And when, the, when obviously mommy needs her caffeine, caffeine fix, and the eight year old is coming in Starbucks, the Frappuccino bottles are right there on the bottom, and they're going to think Frappuccino bottles, flowers, Jane's Flower Shop. Okay? okay? I did not come up with this idea myself, by the way. Okay? There was a whole bunch of us who wrote this. My best friend is a comedian in California. He's also unsuccessful. Um, but okay, so these flowers are going to last for two weeks. So all you got to do is come by my shop, Jane's Flower Shop, and just buy one rose and look. Wow. You're not helping there, Saeed. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. okay. Oh, right. okay. One rose. And uh, now how does it look? Wow, yeah. and, if you, and if you get a delphinium, I know, the pretty flower, yeah. <laughs> okay, and now look how it looks. Oh. Wow, so when a flower dies, get rid of it and come by Jane's Flower Shop and get another flower. So you can take that to your, to your mommy, okay? <laughs> Thank you. So that's the idea behind Flowers for Kids. And again, again, I thank the Ecuadorian government for being such a great sponsor of it. And, and thank you, thank you, by the way, Ambassador. <laughs> um, and thank you, thank you, Ambassador, very much. So, I know there's food to eat, but afterwards, I'm going to stick around, so any questions you have. We have all these flowers here, and so I, every, there's, for every, there's a bunch of 25 roses, and there's flower food sachets, um, and there's how to take care of flowers there. If there's no invitation, go to Jane's Flower Shop, unfortunately. 
but um, you know, you can come and uh, get them, and I'll, I'll help you. And, and but after you have the ceviche, after you have the really good food. But again, what an honor, Ambassador Selly, Efrain Valls, and Diego. It's been great. Um, it's a pleasure working with the Ecuadorian government, and especially with Ambassador Selly, who's been a great Thank sponsor you. of Memorial Flowers. Thank you all very much.